Hi, I'm Marlon Walker and I am live from Pelham's Wasteland and today I have got another episode of March Character Creation Madness for you guys. Today I am doing Low Fantasy Gaming, Low Fantasy Gaming by Pickpocket Press and Steve Grodzicki, who's the, the main author I believe. I think it's, I don't know if it's just him or if he's got help, but um, Steve's a really nice guy. Um, I actually had the pleasure of playing with Steve um, at least once in my buddy Jason Hobbs' Midlands West Marches game. Um, and he's a, a really cool dude um, and, and is a big supporter of... Um, yeah, of of my buddy Hobbs and and really, you know, is a is a really great guy. And so um this is a really cool game. It's a really interesting mix of some kind of OSRE sort of stuff as well as some more kind of uh modern game design elements. So let us get into it. Low Fantasy Gaming Deluxe Edition. This is the, the PDF of Deluxe Edition, which I believe is like $10 or something. I don't remember. There's also a free version, an earlier version of the game that you can get for free, um, which is cool. So uh, what is Low Fantasy Gaming? This is great. It's got um, a lot of stuff about how the game works. The core roles, there's sort of a couple of core roles, but the, the two big ones are roll under your attribute, roll under or equal to your attribute in order to succeed at an attribute check, and skills work almost the same way. Skills give you a plus one to the attribute and allow you to use your reroll pool on um, those skill rolls, so your odds are a little better and you can kind of force the issue with the reroll pool. Um, but yeah, and then there's some, the, the art is pretty cool. There's, um, I know that one of the things they did, people have talked about how the art looks a little generic and kind of stock art-y. And I know that actually one of the things they did was um, a really cool thing where they, um, the contracts for the art were um, non-exclusive. And so the idea is that artists could make art for low fantasy gaming and then also sell it to other people and that sort of stuff and that's part of why you may recognize some of these images from other games um but i thought that was a really cool way to um kind of uh, essentially create more art for the indie games community essentially so what we're going to do for stats is the way that um, we do in my buddy Jason Hobbs' West March's Midlands game, which is to say we're going to roll 46, drop the lowest six times, and we're going to put a stick of 15 into that set, and we're going to do it down the line. So slash R, 4D6, D, L, 1. All right, a 13, a 14. A 10, a 10, a 16, and a 10. So there are actually seven stats to um, low fantasy gaming. So I think what we're going to do, I think looks like that 16, it could go into perception or will. Let's put it in will. 16 in will. We've got the 10 in Charisma. We'll put the 10 in Perception. 10 in Intelligence. We'll put a 15 in Con. And then a 14 in Dex. And a 13 in Strength. And it did not update the modifiers. Why is that? Luck is going to be 11 out of 11. Oh, because I updated the max and not the, uh, the current. So we don't have great stats considering that we rolled 46, dropped the lowest. But 
um, we don't have terrible stats, and we'll probably make a good um, cultist, which is the cleric sort of class, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, the the cultist class is kind of a really flavorful version of the uh, the cleric class. So um, for a more kind of low fantasy. Um, world so yeah that is like i said there are seven stats they're the six normal ones um with will instead of wisdom and then perception is its own stat so it's separated out from uh wisdom which is nice i think and then there is luck and luck basically is its own stat that goes down as you succeed at getting lucky um and it goes up as you get levels so luck is really cool because it's used for a lot of like saving throws or like um a thing called a rescue exploit, which a rescue exploit is basically when one of your buddies gets hit by an enemy, you can hop over, run over, and push them out of the way of the blow, or catch the blow on your shield, or something like that, and um, rescue them, essentially, which gives them a lot more um, survivability. So we are going to play as a human like we do in Hobbs' game with no other races so we don't get the human bonus. So we get one to our reroll pool because that's what you start out with at level one. Classes. We are going to, I'm pretty sure, play a cultist because that is what a uh, key attribute willpower. So will at 16, that's pretty good. So hit points, 1d4 plus four. So that's another cool thing is that rather than the full die, they give you a partial die and a plus, which means that your hit points are going to be um, higher than um, on average than if you're just rolling the dice but there's still some randomness and i think that what hobbs does is max hit points at first level so we're going to have eight hit points plus our con modifier which is two so we're going to be at 10 10 hit points for our cleric um armor and shields light medium armor and shields Weapon bludgeoning and any weapon sacred to the cult's ethos. Skills. Apothecary, divine lore, plus four. Okay. Apothecary. And I suspect apothecary. I don't know what apothecary is. Divine lore, I suspect, is an intelligence. Um, so let's double check how make sure that works. Yeah, look at that. It works just fine. All right, plus four of arcane lore, athletics, deception, detection, gather information, general lore, insight, persuasion, sailing, stealth, wilderness lore. Let's do athletics. And detection is always useful. And um, maybe gather information. That seems to be pretty useful. And finally, let's do persuasion. So we didn't use a lot of skills related to our will, which is our, our sort of best thing, but that's OK. Um, you know, we've got we've got a good list of skills, and the idea is that the skills remember that the skills allow you to use your reroll pool. So normally, basically, if we wanted to persuade persuade someone and we didn't have persuasion, we would just be trying to roll a ten or less on a d twenty to roll under our charisma. With persuasion, we're trying to roll under an eleven, so a little bit better odds, and we can use our reroll pool if we fail. So that's pretty cool. So, cultist attack bonus is currently zero. Features. Add. Feature name. 
blessings. First level, cultist knows a number of blessings equal to his will modifier. Each level thereafter, the cultist learns one additional blessing and if desired may substitute one known blessing for another. In the adventure with one use of this ability per level. So one, one, knows two blessings. I think what we will do, um, Hmm. <laughs> we will do watched over. And Holy Smite will be a cleric of a god of battle, I think. And so Watched Over gives cultists and all PC allies within 20 feet gain plus 1 AC as long as the cultist is above 0 HP. And Holy Smite, as part of a melee attack, instead of rolling damage, you cause your maximum weapon damage plus your level. So that's pretty cool. So we have one use of Holy Smite and we have Watched Over active. So that bumps up our armor class and our buddy's armor class. We also have Sacred Lore, so that gives us advantage on Divine Lore. Nice. So that is what we get. Oh, we need... Um, Yeah, we've got tenants and favor, so um doo -doo -doo. Yeah, we're not gonna worry about choosing a god um specifically. Uh well we might yeah, Graxus looks like a good god. As a uh um, Graxus. That's going to be our deity. All right. Do, 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 do. Let us go to features. So, unique features are a cool thing that allow you to customize your character basically at third, sixth, and ninth levels you can gain a unique feature which gives you basically something not from your um, your particular uh, class. So you end up with a um, something special basically, which is cool, very cool. Um, divine lore and yeah. What is apothecary? Apothecary is also intelligence. Bonds. Equipment. Hobbs lets us get whatever equipment we feel like we should start with. Um, so we're going to have our um, cultist starting pack as well as, um, yeah, the gear pack. So that's the gear pack. And then we're going to get some weapons and armor. So weapons, I really like using axes in this game. And the reason is, um, and I think Graxus would let us use an axe instead of a, a, a heavy mace or hammer. Although the heavy mace or hammer, that's pretty cool too. Hmm. 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 Let's do heavy mace. Just because. Heavy mace. Advantage no. No bonus to hit. No bonus to damage. Base damage is 1d8. 
Crit range is 20. Crit range, crit damage is um, nine because crit's just maximum damage. And then on a natural 19, either knock the target prone or knock them back 10 feet. Nice. So that is going to be our core weapon, um, a heavy mace, and then we are going to have um, maybe a sling as a ranged weapon. That's a blunt weapon. Sling. No advantage. Range is 100. No to hit, no to damage. Base damage, crit range, crit damage. Nice. Sling is in as a ranged weapon. So, armor. We can use medium armor, which gives us a plus three. So, let's see. Worn. Chainmail armor. Medium. Quantity one. Base. AC plus three. So that gets us up to 13 armor class plus one for our dexterity plus one for our shield. Shield quantity one uses one. Awesome. So that is, I think, almost everything. Uh, I think we get 1d6 GP to start with. And if not, I, well, 1 GP. So we have our cultist starting pack, which we could fill out later. That's pretty easy. Um, our one gold piece, we don't have any actual spells because we are not a um, real caster. We are a cultist who relies on divine favor. So we can turn off. That's what I did here is I just turned off the spellbook section of the character sheet. But we've got, you know, we don't have awful stats. We've, we've got okay stats. Not, not as good as my Midlands character, to be honest, but that's okay. We've got 10 hit points, no attack bonus. 15 armor class is pretty respectable. Um, one reroll pool, one for Dark and Dangerous Magic. We have Cultist level 1. Gender is going to be male. Age is going to be medium. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, so let's say 35. Height is going to be short. Weight is going to be heavy. And languages, I'm not going to worry about languages. And vision and race is human. Character name, new PC. What is a good name for a cultist of Graxus? Well, he's probably an Argosan. And it seems like the Argosans have sort of a mix of kind of classical languages and all that sort of stuff. So let's call him... Um, Helmund. That's sort of more of a Germanic name, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, Helmund is going to be our cultist. He's got his stats, he's got his hit points, all of this stuff. He's got his blessings, holy smite and watch over. Oh, we get plus one for watched over, plus one AC. So that's 16. 16 armor class. That's pretty respectable for a first level character in a fairly OSRE game. Um, Got his skills, got his heavy mace and his sling and his armor and some starting pack stuff. All right, so that is that. That is our cultist, Helmand. Um, yeah, Low Fantasy Gaming is a really cool game. It plays really smoothly. Um, if you're familiar with 5e, there's some similarities to 5e. There's some similarities to the OSR games, and there's some similarities to some other games but it, it's really its own beast in a lot of ways and it works really well um in my opinion as far as a um in play 
goes, that it it's really a um, game that plays pretty smoothly in play, um, which is really cool. And it's a, it's a really fun game. My buddy Jason Hobbs uh, is a big fan of this game, and um, he actually runs, like I said, a West March's Midlands game. So if you are interested in playing low fantasy gaming, you should... Uh, leave a comment or something and I can direct you to his discord where he organizes those games and you will be able to play low fantasy gaming with him and some other really cool people so yeah um I hope you have enjoyed this episode of March character creation madness I don't know what next episode is going to be yet I have not picked although I've got some ideas and um, I will end, as I always do, just by saying I've been Arlen Walker, I've been live from Pelham's Wasteland, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.